Hi everyone, this is Tanya Milan from the Self Sufficient Homestead, and we are continuing in our canning series. Today, we are dedicating a whole episode on a very tiny microorganism. So, as home canners, we can high acid foods and low acid foods. If you do not understand the difference between the two, please go to my previous video where I explain them in more detail. So in our high acid foods, we've got microorganisms that affect the food and spoil it. So the microorganisms that affect the high acid food group is molds and yeasts. But in the low acid food category, we've got a much more dangerous enemy. It's called Clostridium botulinum. Other words or other name for it is botulism. Now, that is a tiny microscopic bacteria and one that the USDA has researched for many, many years. So if you've watched my first canning video where it all started, you'll be quite surprised how long people have been canning. But where it all started, a lot of people, thousands of people died of botulism poisoning. But the USDA have tirelessly worked for many years and tested it scientifically to see what we must do to kill this bacteria so it's not going to harm us when we are preserving our foods. So for instance in the United States they've gone from thousands of cases to only 110 cases of which only 25 are food related cases. And all of those food related cases come from low acid foods like your vegetables or your meats that have been canned and not been done properly. So if you think about it, canning safely is all about education. And this is why it's critical to understand this microorganism and how it affects our food and how we can kill it. So let's go into a bit more detail about botulism itself. Botulism starts as a spore and the spore is everywhere. It's on your fruit, it's on your vegetables, it's on your tabletop. And I've probably put botulism spores in my mouth about 10 times today. And nothing has happened to me because the spores are not dangerous. They are harmless. However, the moment you expose these spores to four conditions, they change from their spore state to the vegetative state. And in this vegetative state, think of it as a matured spore, a baby and an adult. In this matured state, the vegetated state, it can release toxins. And that is the botulism toxin that can kill a human. So what are the four conditions that botulism spores need to change from the spore to the vegetative state? First of all, it needs a low acid environment. So in this jar, I do have some beans. Beans are low acid food. So first of all, the first thing is met. It's got a low acid environment. Secondly, we need an environment with no oxygen. Well, there's no oxygen here. This is a vacuum up top here. So we've got the second criteria met. The third one is there needs to be moisture. As you can see, there's definitely moisture in here. So number three, ticked. Number four is it needs to stand in room temperature from about four to 25 degrees Celsius to develop into the vegetative state. Now, if you think about it, what is the temperature in your pantry or on the rack behind you in your kitchen? It's exactly those temperatures. So all four conditions are met for a spore to change to a vegetative state in a bottle of low acid food, being beans, vegetables, meat, chicken, seafood, as mentioned before. So if that is the case, then this can be very dangerous. And that is why you have to understand the process. We do not have to be scared of it, but we have to understand it. If we are empowered with knowledge, we can apply it and we can kill these botulism spores. That brings me to my next point. How do you kill botulism spores? Now, 
the first thing I can tell you is that botulism spores are not killed at boiling point. Now let's elaborate on boiling point for a moment. Boiling point is the point where water boils. So depending on your elevation, it's approximately 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a pot. I use it for cooking and I use it for water bath canning. So I put water in this pot, normal lid. So what will be the temperature of the water when I've got it on the stove and it's boiling? It will be 100 degrees Celsius and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, no more. So if botulism is not killed at 100 degrees Celsius, will this method work? It will not. Next, we have a pressure cooker. This I use to, to cook stews and beans to go really, really soft. The temperature of the pressure cooker is slightly higher, but it's not enough to reach the temperature needed to kill botulism. You cannot use a pressure cooker to can low acid foods. You will not kill botulism. So this is out. So at what temperature is botulism killed? You need to get your temperature up to 115.5 degrees Celsius to 121 degrees Celsius. And you have to keep it there for a certain time. That is 240 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees Fahrenheit that you need to get your temperature up to. All right, that range of temperature plus the time that we have to keep the food at is called our kill zone. And your water bath canner, your pressure cooker cannot do it. So how do we get water up to that high temperature? This is where this bad boy comes in. This is a Bastafield pressure canner, a 40 liter. As you can see, it's a monster. And I really, really appreciate such a monster of a canner because I like to can seriously when I can. I don't like wasting my time. So this canner has got the ability to bring the temperature to 115.5 to 121 degrees Celsius and even higher if I want to, but I don't need it higher. So it's got the ability and then I can keep it there. I've got different weights as well. This is one of the weights. I've got a smaller weight, weight as well. We will still learn about elevation and what pressure with what foods and time frames. So don't worry about that now. All you need to understand is that you need to get your water to the appropriate temperature for the appropriate time to kill botulism. And the only thing that can do it for you that's been scientifically proven is a pressure canner. So I hope this has given you some insight. We always need to understand what we're doing, why are we doing it, and how should we do it. And this is gonna be how we're gonna address this whole series, because you need to understand it to can your food safely. Please, if you have any questions or uncertainties, please pop it in the comments below. I will get back to each and every comment. Also, if you want to become part of a dynamic self-sustainable group, come join us on Self-Sufficient Homesteading and Gardening on Facebook. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you liked it. It would help me such a lot. And if you want to see the rest of the series, please subscribe and then you won't miss anything going forward. And that I will appreciate so much too. So guys, I hope you have a great day. I am so looking forward to the rest of this series and I cannot wait to share the next episode with you.